Father, in the name of Jesus, flowers will fade, grasses will wither, but you are God who remains forever and your word never changes. I bless you because you rule over the affairs of men. Lord, I pray for our world in this season. I pray your comfort upon our families that have been bereaved uh, just suddenly without, without planning for it because of this pandemic. Lord, I pray for comfort. I pray for peace. I pray for uh, just, just the, the, the healing balm of the Lord Jesus Christ over the minds and the hearts of families around the world. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that your mercy will be invoked upon us as a people of the world, that you will stop this pandemic and cause us to see light at the end of this dark tunnel. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we turn to you, O God. You said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways and pray, he said, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Father, please heal the world. Our world needs you right now. Heal the world, O God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into the word this morning, I ask that you speak to every heart in the name of Jesus. Thank you because the barriers and boundaries of, of cities and communities of nations and continents come down right now, that your word may gain ascendancy over philosophies, human opinion, secular humanism, that your word will be the dominating philosophy in the hearts and in the lives of men in the name of Jesus. Send it to the continents of the world. World. Send it to the nations of the world. Send it to the peoples of the world, to people of different creed and, and race and color in the name of Jesus. Let your word be that which molds and guides our lives. Let it be light unto us. Holy Spirit, mantle upon me. Robe me with yourself and robe yourself with me. In the name of Jesus, use me as the oracles of God. I lean strongly on you and I ask that you have your way. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. A season of change, the third installment. I'm talking about the posture of the new you. In other words, the picture of the new you. Amen. The new you. Because I believe there's going to be a new you after this whole process. I'll be reading a number of scriptures. I like to do that because I want everything I say to come from the word of God. So I'll be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 33 verses 24 and 25. I will also read Acts chapter 13, verse 36. Deuteronomy 33, 24, and 25. Acts 13, 36. And my main scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 35 to 44. It's a bit of a lengthy reading. Praise God. You can also add somewhere there. I may not read it. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. I'll make reference to it at the end of the message. Jesus Christ says there that um, uh, you are the salt of the earth. He said, but if salt loses its saltiness or its flavor, then it is good for nothing. He said, how shall it be seasoned? It is good for nothing but to be thrown out and men trample it on the foot. But I'll be reading Deuteronomy 33, 24 to 25, Acts 13, 36 and uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 34 to 35. Praise God. Okay, so we start. Deuteronomy 33, 24 and 25. And of Asher, he said, he, there is Moses, he said, Asher is most blessed of sons. Let him be favored by his brothers and let him dip his foot in oil. By the way, Asher is the name of my first son. <laughs> Asher is most blessed of sons. Let him be favored by his brothers and let him dip his foot in oil. It says, your sandals shall be iron and bronze. And this is my phrase of emphasis. As your days, so shall your strength be. As your days, so shall your strength be. As your dispensation, so shall your relevance be. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 13. We're going down to the New Testament. Acts chapter 13. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Acts chapter 13. I'll read one verse of scripture there. So it's Paul preaching. And he said about King David. Verse 36. It says, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. And my main scripture today is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 
chapter 15, verses 35 to 44. Praise God. But someone will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one. What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but mere grain, mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies, heavenly bodies, and terrestrial bodies, earthly bodies, terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another, from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual. There is a spiritual body. I'm sure somebody is saying, Pastor, why are you reading about death and resurrection? It all makes sense at the end of the day. Amen. Praise God. The portrait of the new you. The portrait of the new you. Praise. Is that what I said earlier? Did I say posture or portrait? But I meant the portrait of the new you. Praise God. It's the portrait of the new you. In concluding the series, A Season of Change, it is important that we all locate ourselves in these changing times and to allow the change to change us for the better. We must all identify the lessons we are living this season with so that we can come out better on the other side. Everybody must be able to identify what lessons am I living this season that the whole world is going through? What lessons am I living it with so that you can come out on the other side? Now, I've told you before and I say it again that things will not remain the same again after this experience. And so I feel responsible as a leader to prepare you for and to take you into the new. I want to prepare you for the new and I want to take you or herd you into the new or guide you as a coach into the new. That's what I feel my responsibility is as a leader. I said earlier in the series that that crisis is an accelerator. It forces us to do things that we otherwise uh, will be reluctant to do. It forces us to do things quickly things that we've been dragging our foot about uh, and not wanting to do. Uh, um, Change accelerates us and pushes us to go ahead to do the things that we know we are supposed to do. Change is the bedrock of innovation. It is the foundation of innovation. It is because change comes that different things happen. It is change that becomes the fulcrum upon which fashion, I said that before, fashion changes, uh, movie, entertainment changes, media changes, arts change because of change. Everything hangs on change and revolves. It is the bedrock of innovation. And what that means is that right now, beginning from this season, and it has started happening, we begin to witness the emergence of new technologies, of innovations, of robotics, of artificial intelligence, uh, things like that will be on the increase. We begin to see new applications come on board. And even existing applications will begin to have new functions. Uh, There will be new innovations in automobiles. Cars will begin to have functions that will amaze you because change has come upon us. Now, it will be absurd. If all of these changes are happening around you, and you remain your old self, it will be absurd. If all this is happening around you, and you remain your old self, Moses said to the tribe of Asher, he said, as your days 
so shall your strength be. In other words, he was saying to that tribe that a grace is going to come upon you that will make you to be relevant to your times. To your time. It's a prayer we should all pray. That as you grow older, you should be wiser. As you grow older, you should be more relevant. That your, your best days should not be in your past. You should never refer to yourself or to your, to your productivity, uh, to your influence, to your impact in past tense. That as your days, so shall your wisdom, your strength, your relevance, your anointing be. You don't want to be behind in the modes and in the methods of the new because, because the new has come upon us. You can't be in the old. I must say to you that you cannot impact what you cannot identify with. You cannot impact what you cannot identify with. You cannot be old school and have a positive influence on the new school. You can't be old school and have a positive influence on the old school because a time will come, even language will begin to change. Slangs will begin to come up, uh, technological terms. You'll just find yourself irrelevant. So you cannot impact what you cannot identify with. You can't be in the old school and have a positive influence on the new school. Paul said it concerning David. He said, David served this generation. And you know David. He went to wars for God. He gathered money for the building of the temple. He, he, he did great. He wrote the Psalms. He served this generation after the will of God. But Paul said, the time came, he fell asleep. In other words, his usefulness timed out. If at some point they told him, sir, just stay at home. We don't need you in the battles again. Because, because a time came that his relevance, you know, uh, timed out. He was, he was no longer needed in the affairs of things. And so you must know that you, that, that you have just a very little time to engage in, in, in your generation and to bring out everything that God has put within you. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to be deliberate in being ahead of the change by painting a picture of the new you. I want you to be deliberate. I don't want this to happen to you. I want you to be in charge, to stir this change in your favor, to paint a picture or a portrait of the new you, to begin to say, this is the kind of man, the kind of woman I'm going to be after this, after this pandemic, after everything settles down. This is the kind of marriage I'm going to have, a picture of the kind of marriage, of the kind of children, of the kind of business, of the kind of ministry, of the kind of innovations, uh, ideas, things you want to start to begin to paint the picture. I said last week that the greatest change that man can ever experience and will help ever experience is death. Death. Death is the greatest change that man will actually experience. Actually, change itself is a form of death because it is the dying of the old for the resurrection of the new. It is the cessation of a face and the inception of another because like I told you last week or two weeks ago, I said death is just separation. It is separation from a place of existence or a realm of existence into another realm. So change itself is a form of death. It is the dying of the old and the inception of the new. The old dies for the new to come. The old ceases for the new to come to be. Hallelujah. And Paul's comparison of death and sowing seeds in the scripture I read is very striking. You will see the wisdom of God in teaching us about change because in that first Corinthians chapter 15, Paul began to talk about death and resurrection and compared it to the planting of seeds and their sprouting. This will help someone who is unsure and afraid to break with tradition to begin to see the prospects in the new. That as we look at that thing uh, or the things that Paul teaches in those verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The first thing I see there is that Paul says that you must reckon today as mere seed. As mere seed. You must reckon where you are today as mere seed. He said what is planted is just mere seed. It is just mere seed. In other words, Paul, Paul discountenances the seed. He's looking forward to the fruit that will come up because it will be greater. And, it's, and, and Jesus Christ said it in another way. He said, except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. So reckon today as a mere seed that must enter the ground and die for the post-COVID you, which is the fruit to emerge. No matter how much you like today, no matter how much you celebrate today, no matter how much you have enjoyed today, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. 
death is separation it is separation so you want to subject yourself your style your processes your structures your models to the death experience because until it dies it abides alone but when it dies it bears much fruit it bears much fruit praise the name of the lord now i also see in that place that paul says that uh, 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 that you must embrace the death process i, I see that i says you must embrace Embrace the death process because it is the death process that opens the doors, the door, sorry, that opens the door to possibilities and abilities you never thought existed. Death opens the door to possibilities, to abilities, to giftings you never knew existed. Until you separate from how it has always been, you can never welcome how it can also be. Until you separate from how it has always been, you will not be able to welcome how it can also be. So Paul said, a seed sown must first die. It must first decay before it will quicken and spring up. It must first die before it will quicken and spring up. So be at peace with the death process. Be at peace with breaking with tradition. Be at peace with stopping what you are familiar with or what you have always done. Be at peace with that because until it dies, the new will not come. Paul also begins to talk about the beauty of the new. He said the beauty of the new emerges from the death of the old. The beauty of the new emerges from the death of the old. He said the sprouting of a seed is like the resurrection. It's like the resurrection and both of them are miracles. They are miracles. The sprouting of a seed because how can that grain of seed uh, that is maybe brown in color goes into the ground. If you, if you could see it under the ground, it begins to decay. It breaks apart. It, it almost becomes part of the soil. And then all of a sudden, something greenish, whitish in color comes out. Green, uh, a green whitish in color comes out and begins to spring out and becomes a tree. It's a miracle. How can a dead body that decays and, and turns to bones one day come out with a glorious body? Uh, it, it's a miracle. From the death of the seed it comes the roots. When the seed dies, the root comes, the shoot comes out of it, the stem comes out of it, the branches come out of it, uh, the, the leaves come out of it, flowers come out of it, fruits come out of it, and seeds that prepare you for another process of change, another dying and resurrection process, another resurrection process. So the beauty of the new is in the dying of the old. Until you separate, you will not see what can be, what can be, you cannot see, you may not see what can be now the body that is sown paul makes us to understand is not the body that shall be the body that is sown or that is buried is not the body that shall be even for resurrection and that's another message for another day but in plant life it is not what you sow that will come out paul says that it is sown in weakness but it is raised in strength he said it is sown in corruption but it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, raised in glory. Sown in weakness, raised in strength. Sown natural, but it is raised supernatural. In other words, the glory of the latter will be greater than the former. This means that the bodies that, it basically means that the bodies that die, when they rise, will be so transformed that they will be fitted for the heavenly regions. Talking about human bodies. When a body dies, when somebody dies, the body that is resurrected will be so glorious will be so filled with the power of God that it will be fitted to live in the heavenly regions. Therefore, when we allow our old ways to also die, to be buried, we allow the old ways to go, the old innovation, the old styles to go. It says the things that are going to come out, the ideas, the innovations, the, 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 the concepts that will come out will be fit for higher levels. They will be fit for higher levels. If you can just let this go, it will shock you what will come out because what dies is sown in dishonor. But when it rises, it comes in great, it comes in great glory. And lastly, Paul says there that all flesh is not the same. He says, and there are different levels of glory. He says, the sun has a glory, the moon has a glory, the stars have a glory, and all of them have different glories. He said that God gives to every seed that emerges from death a body that he pleases. I want you to see that. He said, God gives every seed a body that he pleases. This body someday shall be transformed into a glorious body. And so everything that is sown comes out with a glorious 
body. He said God gives it a body as he deems fit. And so he gives the guava a particular kind of body. He gives the pineapple seed a particular kind of body. He gives the mango seed a particular kind of body. So basically God is saying there that what kind of body do you want to give the seed of your old that is dying today? And that's why I'm coming up with the portrait that you want to begin to give a body to the seed or the fruit that you want to see emerge. You want to begin to paint a picture of your tomorrow. Now, let me say this at this point, that when I say change, I do not mean you should become uh, a morally bankrupt version of yourself. I'm not saying to become a bad person. Because this change will also witness the increase of vices, of vice. It will increase the, it will, it will witness the increase of vice. Men will invent more corrupt things. So in this world, there'll be more of internet fraud, there'll be more wickedness. All those things will be happening side by side. Jesus Christ says in the last days, lawlessness will increase and the love of many will grow cold. So you must say to yourself, lawlessness may be increasing, but I must protect my love. And so when I say change, I'm not saying become a worse person. Uh, A man called Victor Hugo said, change your opinions but keep to your principles. Keep to your principles. Don't change your Christian testimonies. So he said, change your opinions, keep to your principles. Change your leaves, but keep your roots intact. In other words, change your methods, but keep your values. Let your core values remain. Core values remain righteousness, honesty, remains truth, it remains integrity, financial discipline. We must keep all of those things. Amen. So I want to help to paint a picture help you to guide you maybe tutor you or maybe just give you a template that can help you to begin to see a picture of a new you so i'm saying that the new you the new you the portrait of the new you must think differently the new you must think differently the resurrected you must think differently no more defeat defeatist or impossible thinking Uh, you must be innovative and cutting edge in your thinking be open to new ideas Be open to new ideas. The new you must be open to new ideas uh, because the mind is like a parachute. It only works when it opens. So you must open it to let new things come in. Be open to new ideas. Don't be afraid to try new things. Be a pioneer. I pray to God to baptize you with a pioneering spirit. I pray it for myself too. A spirit to start something new, to blaze the trail, to think wide and to think wild, to let your imaginations lose to think of the what ifs what if and then try them out what if what if the right brothers i'm sure they said to themselves one day what if metal could fly in the sky and then they came up with the airplane what if we could put electricity in all the houses of the world and thomas edison tried something out think of all the what ifs and begin to try them out number two number two So the first thing, think differently. I have seven of them quickly. Number two, travel light. The picture of the new you must be somebody traveling light. Travel light, travel light. Decide to drop certain things that connect you to the old ways that you don't want to see in your new. Certain things that connect you to your old ways that you don't want to see in your new. Certain attitudes, uh, behaviors, bad habits, certain associations. uh, The lot, lot, lot that followed Abraham. The lot that stop you from seeing what God is showing you or from hearing what God is saying to you. Because if you don't do that, it will look as if you are moving into a new house, but you carry all the items of the old house into the new house. Very soon, the new house will begin to look like the old house. So certain things must drop behind you. You must leave certain things behind you. Let the weights that slow you down, let them go. Let the offense go. For somebody is bitterness, somebody that offended you, for somebody, and this may be a word for somebody, somebody's owing you money and uh, you have tied your last three years to that money. It seems as if nothing will happen until they pay you that money. God says, let it go. Yes, it may be a million naira. It may be $200. I don't know. It may be 1,000 yen. I don't know where you are listening to this. Uh, No matter how much it is, maybe not for everybody, but for some person listening right now, God says, let it go. Don't tie your supply to that 3 million naira. Don't tie your supply to that 2,000, 5,000 dollars. I am more than enough for you. So let it go. For some of you, just need to decongest your wardrobe. Go to your wardrobe and let some things, some, some, some suits, they look like jackets. They are not suits. You know, just let them go. 
They look like raincoats, more like, let them go, let them go. Let some clothes go. For some ladies, that will be deliverance right there. That will be you traveling light. Number three, reorder your priorities. The new you must be able to reorder. That's the picture of the new you I see. Reordering your priorities. This season has shown us what is important and what is not important. And that's one thing that I have learned from this season. Just even the fact that many people died unexpectedly should knock sense into our heads that life is precious and time is short. That life is precious and time is short. So you reorder your priorities. See life in the light of eternity. See life in the light of eternity. What happens beyond this place? And approach everything with a sense of purpose. Everything in connection to your purpose. How does this connect to what God has called me to do here on earth? We also saw uh, that without people, at least another thing I saw this season, is that without people, our businesses will die. So as you are reordering your priority, you want to also value people and connect better with people and connect better with your customers. Because some of us have amazing businesses, but nobody patronized them recently. In fact, I believe one of the things also affecting the oil prices around the world is that we've not fueled our cars in a long time. So many of us are just at home. So people matter. People matter. We also realize that health, not money, is true wealth. Health, not money, is true wealth. In fact, we know of a popular wealthy Nigerian that died uh, this season. Money couldn't help. So health, somebody said that sometimes we spend our health to get wealth. And when we finally get the wealth, we use up all the wealth to secure our health. So health is wealth. And lastly, we saw that family is key. Family is key. People from Myanmar, Burma, Burmese people, they said that in times of tests, family is best. And so we also saw that family is very key. So reorder your priorities. Prioritize your family. Praise God. Number four, be money wise. Be money wise. Now, let me say at this juncture, I did a series in 2016 called Money Wisdom in uncertain times. I have them in audio files, but I'm loading them on my YouTube page. Uh, we work something around there. So you can see them uh, and listen to them on my YouTube page. You can get the link uh, on the uh, scrolling at the bottom of your screen or somewhere on the screen, you get the link. Make sure you listen to them. You will learn a lot. Money wisdom in uncertain time. So I said the, the new you, the new you must be money wise. The new you must be mon- money wise. Praise the name of the Lord. So the last four weeks were the toughest for many people financially. Were the toughest for many people financially. For some people, understandably so, uh, because they make their monies day in, day out. But for some, it is not acceptable, not understandable why it should have been rough for them. Now, rough times come in life. So you want to learn to save. And we've seen that. We've seen that we need to learn to save. You want to be cautious with your finances and cut wastage. That's the new you that I see. Notice that this season, you could not use all your designer clothes, designer shoes, designer bags, designer earrings, designer weave on. We could not because we're all in the house. So that should begin to say to you that spend less on them. Spend less on them. (laughs) That means they really don't matter. Don't waste your resources of time, of energy and finances acquiring things you don't need. You must understand that things are still a bit shaky with the economy and it's the world over. Things are still a bit shaky with the economy. So I want to encourage some of you, diversify your income source, begin to think of other things to do, and be committed to building your wealth little by little. You can't joke with savings, with keeping something aside. You don't want to be the kind of that person that something just happens, three days of not being at work, or or one month, and then you're on the street begging for help. So you need to be money wise. Go to that YouTube page, watch those things, and also remember to subscribe to the page when you go that go there so because i'll be putting more uh materials there in the coming days praise the name of the lord hallelujah it's wali afelumon and whatever the link is can just search my name now the fifth thing i see the new you the new you is going to do business and work differently you're going to do business differently you're going to work differently that's the portrait of you that i see I must say to you that in this new season, work will be less profit-driven and more people-driven. 
So you have to be more compassionate towards your staff. You want to think about uh, workplace safety and hygiene in the workplace, especially in the coming three to five months. You need to be very particular about that. And it's also a good thing to make your work culture. Make communication a strong part of your work culture with your staff, with your customers. Use all the different media platforms because we also realize that we need to talk with one another. I was listening to one of our, uh, watch our staff devotion uh, yesterday. We, we are doing our staff devotion on WhatsApp and uh, somebody was saying that their mind, their mind, they've just been, you know, just had to fight a lot of mind battles. And I know that it's a consequence of just being alone at home this season and not having connected with people. People matter. So communication is very important. So you want to be flexible in your approach to work. You want to let some people work remotely, at least away from the office, because now we have seen that it is possible. It is possible. Then you want to invest in new software, in hardware uh, for work efficiency. Work smart and work light. Light. Perhaps you don't need the number of staff you presently have. So some of them will need to Mm -hmm. So you need to restructure. You need to begin to restructure. Uh, if your horse is dead, don't keep riding it. Don't keep riding it. Jump off of it and do something new. Do something new. So you want to think of what you can do fast. Okay, let me say it like this. Speed is going to also matter in the new dispensation. So you want to think of speed, how we can do things faster. You also, you also want to begin to rethink renting big office spaces big shop spaces because we're also seeing that many people are their rent is counting but they couldn't go into the shop this season so also begin to think am i pushing all my things online and having a warehouse or something so you want to be thinking of that and i also want to encourage you to think of staffing hiring staff for functions like media social media marketing customer relations because some of those things and several other things uh, will be needed in the coming uh, months in the coming years and that uh, number six you want to be constantly learning that's the picture of the new you i see always learning we are in an information age or an information driven age in daniel chapter 12 verse 4 god said to daniel seal the book for the end till the end of time say seal the book say because i guess people will not be able to understand it or be able to study enough to understand what daniel was saying he said, in those days, people will run to and fro. He said, the knowledge will increase in the last days. That's what the Bible says. Knowledge will increase. How many of you know that knowledge has increased in these last days? We are bombarded. I don't know how many megabytes of information uh, uh, we get every day. And just bombarding our brain from WhatsApp, from Twitter, from Facebook, from TV, from radio, all around. So you want to read and listen to news. Take courses. Go on relevant trainings uh, or uh, trainings that are relevant to your areas. Of, of engagement. Every area of our lives now is driven by data and digits, by computer. <laughs> our learning, our management, planning, finance, uh, even medical, uh, even medicine. Sometimes you can get diagnosis on the internet <laughs> just for what is wrong with you. Of course, doctors don't advise that, but it can be the first aid kind of thing that you do. So these things are driven by digits, by data, entertainment, communication. So you want to learn a new software that makes your work easier. We are accounting software, uh, designing, uh, music, and all of that. So stay abreast of facts as much as possible. Stay abreast, abreast, I'm sorry, of facts as much as possible. You don't want to be ignorant in this coming dispensation. The tolerance for ignorance will be lower. The tolerance for ignorance will be lower. In this new dispensation, people will pay for information. People will pay for information. They will pay you for what you know. They will pay you for what you know. And I must say this to somebody, especially in my climb here in Nigeria. I want to beg you. I know it's difficult for some of you, but try and get a phone that gives you access to the internet. Data will truly be life in the post-COVID world. So don't say, well, I'm not on, my phone can't connect to the, you'll be missing a lot. You'll be left behind. So as much as, I don't care if the phone is used or something, but let ensure that it has access uh, to the internet. And number seven, be global in your engagement. The new you, I want you to be global in your engagement. More than ever before, 
the post-COVID world will be a global village. We've been in a global village, but more than ever before, there will be greater connectivity. And that's where the 5G will come in because right now, if you remember that emerge on a... Uh, on Wednesday, it was breaking network issues and it's because there's a lot of traffic. So we need something more powerful than it. So don't fight it. Even if it has, like I told you before, even if there are negative connotations, there's a lot of good it has come to do. So there'll be greater connectivity and everybody can have access to what you do around the world more easily in the coming age. This is more of an opportunity than a challenge. So don't see it as a challenge, see it as an opportunity. It means your market, your clients, your classmates, even your business partners or your fans can be thousands of kilometers away from you. So to be relevant in this coming age, always think of your content as serving the whole world. So if you notice my prayers changed, I'm talking, God bring down, you know, continental barriers, uh, national barriers that this world, because you need to begin to think like that. You need to begin to mind your language, the cultural content, the packaging of whatever you're doing. You need to begin to say to yourself, will they be universally accepted or relevant? Because somebody somewhere may find offensive what somebody in another place finds amusing. So you also want to be sensitive in the coming age. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I have attempted to help paint a portrait of the new you after this season. You cannot afford to go back to the way things were before. This series is ending right now. And uh, I think it's a treasure trove that you need to keep and listen to over and over. That you don't go back. You don't go back to where you are coming from. God wants you to reinvent yourself and to find relevance in the days to come. To find relevance that as your days, so shall your strength be. You want to be like David who served his generation. He was real, his, his generation needed him. He impacted that generation. Impacted that generation. I want to be like Paul, who said, I keep forgetting the things behind me, and I keep stretching. I keep pressing for the things ahead of me. Or like Daniel, I like him so well. This guy kept putting, putting pressure on himself. He kept reinventing himself to a point where he, was, he found relevance in three successive governments. And these three governments don't like one another. They were cool. They all planned cool to oust the other ones. But they were all called Daniel to serve on their cabinet. The Bible says about the sons of Issachar that they had an understanding of the times. They knew what to do per time. And the Bible says they became commanders over their brethren because they were relevant. They understood their season. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Permit me to give this as a pro bono information. Free, free information. Now, I did a Vox Populi on my new Facebook page. I asked a number of people. I just, well, I asked the question there. And I said, what do you think will be the most viable businesses in the post-COVID world? What do you think will be the most viable businesses in the, the post-COVID covid world i just did that to help people because sometimes there are ideas in the minds of people that will shock you so people went around uh, people responded on that page insightful responses and so i'll be sharing some of them with you now just very few but i'd like you to also go to my new facebook page my personal facebook uh, page also have the link there and you can go and read what people have said. So some of the likely things that you'll begin to see, social media marketing is going to be big. Uh, there's going to be content development and writers. So there'll be more TVs, channels, and people coming up with internet TV. And when those things, internet, radio, internet TV come up, uh, they will need people to get them content. So if you can write scripts and all of those things, advertisement will be coming on board. People may begin to pay less for cable TV. <laughs> so things like Netflix and more of them. In fact, I'm seeing that Airtel now has one. Uh, I saw yesterday uh, Glow is now having Glow Cloud and things like that. Everything, everybody will get on board. So you want to begin to look for solutions around uh, those things. If you're a software developer, it will also be good for you uh, in this season. Software uh, development. Praise the name of the Lord. There are several other things. In fact, one person wrote 15. One person wrote 15 things you can do. And I want to thank them, Brother Ferdinand. I may not, I may not remember all their names. Brother Ferdinand, uh, Sister Shola, Marina from Canada. Thank you for uh, commenting there. Uh, there's um, uh, uh, 
Oweye, Mariam Oweye, thank you very much uh, for writing. Bobby Udo from Lagos, thank you for writing. There are amazing ideas that were posted on that page that I'd like you to go and see. Messi Ebute, too, I remember that you also wrote. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And if you have ideas to go and put on that page, because I'm hoping it will be a resource that people can go to and see all kinds of things. I think Ufama Otoro, you also wrote there. Thank you. People can go there, see, get some ideas and run with. And you guys wrote amazing and fantastic, doable things. God bless you. God bless you. Biodo Indero, I remember you also wrote. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, as I round up, as I round up, to change is ultimately your decision to make. It is your decision to make. You can choose to remain the way you've always been after all of this and do things the way you have always done them after all of this. It's your decision to make. The only thing is that you will become obsolete, you will become outdated, and you will become irrelevant. You can choose to remain. <laughs> you can say, I'm like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken, that cannot be moved. You can say to yourself, the Bible says, do not move the ancient landmark. You can, you can find some of those scriptures and remain. But I can guarantee you will become obsolete, outdated, irrelevant. Jesus Christ said that if salt, as sweet as it is, loses its flavor, he said it is good for nothing. He said it will be thrown out and be trampled underfoot. You don't want to be dumped and left behind, thrown away by the wayside of life. I pray for you as I round up this series that you will find relevance in this coming age in the name of Jesus. That your heart and your mind will begin to invent new things. In the name of Jesus, your heart will begin to indict of creative concepts and ideas. In the name of Jesus, that the strings that have bound you and have made it difficult for you to express your full potential, your full giftings. Like those strings that tied Samson were broken off. The Bible says they were broken like bond flax. I break them easily off of you. In the name of Jesus, that God will begin to fill your heart with dreams. Give you dreams of the night, visions of the day, revelations. In the name of Jesus, that things that have been difficult up until now will become easy for you. In the name of Jesus, that in this new dispensation, you will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. That God will give you wings. In the name of Jesus, that where you've been standing, you will become outstanding. You will stand out in this new dispensation. In the name of Jesus. And where you find it difficult to change, yet you need to change there. God will make grace available for you. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes you need assistance. You need help. You need a coach. You need a mentor. You need somebody to spoil you. May God make those available for you when you need them. In the name of Jesus, you will not be stranded. You will not be stranded. You will always know what to do. The grace that was upon the sons of Issachar will come upon you. In the name of Jesus, you will be an enigma in the coming dispensation. A force to be reckoned with. In the name of Jesus, your name shall not be forgotten for many years by the reason of the things that God will do through you. In the name of Jesus, God will begin to bring you into the company of the great so that what is upon them can begin to rub upon you so that you can begin to come uh, come into your own in the name of Jesus. Somebody is as if it's been a dry desert around you, a, a trackless, barren desert, but God is causing it to rain upon you. And I'm seeing leaves springing forth, and oasis is springing forth. I'm seeing trees, I'm seeing flowers blossoming in your life. In the name of Jesus, you will end better than you began, and the glory of your latter shall be greater than your former. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you. I want to pray right now. And I want you to join me. You know, the most... The, the, the way you can make the most of change is to anticipate it and to prepare for it. That's what change is really all about. If you want to make the most of it, it's all about anticipation and preparation. It is you deciding what you want to be on the other side of change. It's a decision. 
I said earlier that the ultimate change is death. That's the ultimate change. And I also have told you before that death is actually not cessation of existence. It is not the cessation of existence. It is just the transference of residence. You move from one place of residence to another. And it is inevitable. It is inevitable. Death is inevitable. And we've seen that. I think right now over 200,000 people in the world have unfortunately passed on to the great beyond. Some of them not ready, not prepared for it. I've painted for you today a portrait of what you will be like post-COVID. But the bigger portrait I want you to see today or to paint for yourself is what will you be like or where will you be after this place we call Earth? Are you prepared? Because if you are not prepared for it, then you are not prepared for it. Death must also be anticipated and be prepared for because this change can happen. This change called death, this change can happen when we least expect it. I remember the story of a king that I read about some time ago. There was a lot of noise in the corridors of the palace. The king had died. The king had died. The king is dead. The king is dead. They shouted. He was found in his bed and he had died a natural death in his sleep. You know, and uh, they began to say, where has he gone? Where has he gone? Out of their grief and pain and shock, where has he gone? And one of his wise counselors said, no, I know where the king has gone to. The king, of course, has gone to heaven. The king has gone to heaven. Why? To heaven. The other ones were, why? Why? Can't be heaven. But somebody came and said, no, his, very, his servant, like his spear, the one who worked closely with him, he said, no, I beg to differ, sir. He said, I've worked with this king for several years and we have traveled to many places because he was a man who loved to travel. And whenever he wanted to travel, he spoke a lot about wherever he was traveling to. He collected pictures. He went online. He googled about the place. He spoke about the place. He made adequate preparation. He spoke about the place he wanted to travel to. He says, sir, I beg to say that this was one trip that I never heard this king talk about. This was one preparation I never saw him make. We made no preparation for this journey. I am quite sure, sir, that he has not gone to heaven. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, nobody can come to God except through me. The way to prepare for change is to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, to give him your heart, to give him your life, to surrender all to him. I want to pray for you this morning to make the preparation for the greatest change that will take place someday, either by the coming of the Lord or when you close your eyes and sleep, the sleep that you'll not wake up on this side any longer. If you are that person, irrespective of where you are or the people around you, I'd like you to put your hand on your chest or bow your head and close your eyes and say this prayer after me. Say, Father, I come to you today in the name of your son, Jesus. Say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Change me. Transform me. And prepare me for the ultimate change. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I give you my heart and I give you my life. From this day I declare that I'm a child of God. The old is gone and the new has come. Thank you for accepting me as your child. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.